Good evening, everyone. I now call to order the regular meeting of the Revere School Committee. Please rise to salute the flag. Roll call of the members. Mr. Ferranti? Here. Ms. Gravelisi? Here. Mrs. Rizzo? Here. Mr. Sinella? Here. Ms. Ty? Here. Mr. Visconti? Here. Mayor Arrigo? Here. Uh, first item on our agenda is the superintendent's report. Sure. Dr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we have several items under the superintendent's report tonight. Uh, and the first one I want to share is related to part of the district initiative, district improvement plan, and um, the superintendent's goals uh, for this academic year. And that was the introduction of a pilot English language learner program that the Garfield school staff worked with our RELB committee um, to define and uh, implement and they've now been about halfway through the year of their implementation and I've asked them to come tonight to share with us what their initial findings are what they're seeing and what their next steps are going to be to help us grow in our ability to meet the needs of all of our English language learner students so here with us tonight are is our director of English language learner services Mr. Albert Mogavero and two of the teachers who have been hugely instrumental in designing this program and also helping with the implementation at the, at the Garfield School, uh, Lisa Consolo and Michael Walpole, and I'll invite the two of them to the podium uh, to share, us, share with us the information about the program. Good? Yes. <laughs> um, Mayor Arrigo, school committee members, Superintendent Kelly, Assistant Superintendent Makaba, and our student representative. Um, we are so excited to share with you um, this evening the work of the Revere Educator Leadership Board's Organizational Structure Council work um, and would like to, I would like to also convey how proud I am to work for a district who values and supports the shared decision-making process as much as Riviera does. So I just wanted to say that. Tonight, our work that we're going to present is the ELL Newcomer Academy. Um, this pilot is at the Garfield Elementary School, and it's the work of um, the Organizational Structure Council. So this started back um, in December 2015. Um, we sent out a survey and we had about 400 respondents to the survey and basically the council was really looking for um, what was its focus going to be in the future and we really wanted to have like a grassroots movement and really come from the teachers and it really be a true shared decision making process and some of the things that came up were um, an ELL newcomer academy in grades two to eight actually was what we found and a therapeutic elementary school was a high priority on the list. Um, so the survey data it, it revealed that there was an increasingly um, there was an increasing need for us to kind of better take a look at the ESL services that were being provided to our newcomer students and how we are working with their families and how to improve an already successful ESL program that we have in the district and that's kind of what we take took on and where it came from. So we'll start with the definition of a newcomer. Newcomers, according to what we're using, is our newly arrived immigrants placed in our schools or students who are native to the USA that have little or no English proficiency and at times may have had limited or no formal education in their native countries. So um, just to give a little bit of background, after about a year after that survey, we spent some time researching similar urban districts, um, their SEI and ESL programs, and we surveyed a lot of students and parents across the district. We then formatted a model program that would not only take into account the newcomer services, but would also look to improve services of all ESL students. That was our goal. Um, and why Garfield? 
um, go big or go home, right? So we have about this year 299 ESL students being serviced. Um, we are the highest, Al, am I right? Highest in the district right now. Um, and also the group of teachers that we have working at the Garfield, a very passionate bunch of educators willing to take on innovative ideas and challenges. And so that's why Garfield. Um, what it looks like is a three-year pilot. We are in the first year of implementation now. We're about half, halfway through the year. Um, it is 90 minutes daily of multi-grade ESL Newcomer Academy blocks in grades one through five. It's actually grades two to five that are multi-graded and grade one um, remain with their grade level peers. And hopefully in the future, part of the program will be an after-school extension program for newcomers for grades two through five for um, using Title III funding. We're not at that stage of implementation yet. We haven't enacted that yet, but that's coming in the future. Um, and how this program has worked is basically taking a look at some creative scheduling and really thinking about our ESL students as the basis of our scheduling within the school. And um, so in our school, it looks like two out of five homerooms were identified as newcomer sections during the classroom formation procedures. Um, during the 2016-17 year, we put the classes together. And so two of those classes were designated as those newcomer homerooms for this year and potentially throughout the pilot. Um, as new students enroll, they are identified by PIC as ELD level zero or one, and they are assigned to those specific classrooms within the grade level. So there's communication process back and forth with PIC and the school to let us know what level they're coming in at so we place them appropriately. Um, higher level of ELL students are also able to be placed in these classrooms, but we, we spread them out with throughout the um, five other classrooms. Classroom formation procedures will still pri be prioritized and we balance um, academics and behavior as usual. So we have a process at the Garfield Elementary School and many schools do as well throughout the district where we make sure that we have kind of a, you know, a homogeneous group of students. Am I using the wrong word? Heterogeneous group, group of students within the class. So we have a good balance of academics and models um, within a classroom. So just because a classroom is labeled newcomer, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the students in that class are language learners, that there's a good balance of different kinds of learners in the classroom. And then five, um, the five homerooms home at every grade level must follow the prescribed schedule. So that schedule is very important to this. Um, and they have to stick to it and it's always based on the ELL schedule. So it's really going from a change of focus from being a Title I school to more of an ESL school. So our anticipated results of this Newcomer Academy, um, the design of the, the Newcomer Academy will improve student achievement, achievement particularly for this high need subgroup, and it, it does this by pro providing a specific time for targeted focus and instruction for these students and providing the support for families. Um, the, it, it anticipates results with um, moving them closer to their grade level peers um, in a quicker way, in a more effective way. Um, and also it really is taking into account the social emotional aspects of assimilating students and really taking it into consideration what is it like as a newcomer and and having those teachers take time with these students within this block of time that they have them. Um, that's it. So this is kind of a comparison just to understand. I know it's hard to really articulate and really get a glimpse of what the schedule is actually like and how it compares to what it used to be like. Um, so in the left-hand side on the presentation, you can see that these are our past school practices. So we, the school schedule was created by teachers based around reading intervention services, and, and we usually called this our Title I schedule. So we based the whole schedule around the reading intervention. And so this year, the school-wide block schedule was determined by the principal based around the ESL schedule. So the ESL schedule took priority. In the past, two to three weeks were spent by the ESL teachers at the beginning of the year, kind of going to teachers and trying to form their groups and find times and pull students out. 
Um, at times that worked for teachers and at times sometimes it didn't work for teachers, but these were the times that they were able to pull. Um, and it took them two to three weeks. And for this schedule, it took no time at all. Um, the recommended of instructional time for ESL services was not always being met in the past. And now the recommended times for ESL services are more closely being followed. And 50 plus students lose some, if not most, of math instruction last year and year, in years past to be pulled out of ESL for services. Mm -hmm. And now with the new schedule, no students are anticipated to lose any math instruction as a result of the ESL services. Also, some, some practices for the pilot groups are available um, for students to transition out of the Newcomer Academy. So just because they start in that particular group that receives a 90-minute period of instruction during the day, it doesn't mean they have to remain there. And we're, we're thinking and brainstorming of ways to transition them, but we did provide support within the schedule that if they are um, deemed ready to transition, that there is a space for them to go into a new group. And so that group is available. Um, it address, addresses the need of the entire ESL program, and that's why I like this so much. We call it the Newcomer Academy, but in reality, it really took a look at the whole picture of the ESL program at Garfield, and um, it's one of the things I love about it. And it maximizes educational time and learning opportunities for all ESL students. So Michael's just gonna share some more. Um, so I'd just like to start by saying um, Lisa actually coordinated and organized the schedule that we're now using this year for our Newcomer Academy, um, and a lot of time and effort went into that. So it has been a big success because of the input from our ELL teachers and people like uh, Ms. Consolo who helped create that schedule. So what we just did recently was conducted a survey of the staff at Garfield. Um, it was open to all staff members. Um, and we had only about 21 responses or so, but we were able to get a lot of good feedback about how the Newcomer Academy is currently being uh, implemented at our school. So it was just kind of a little progress report for ourselves to figure out what's working well and what needs to be improved upon. Um, so as uh, Lisa said earlier, um, ESL services began uh, approximately two and a half weeks earlier this year than compared to years past. Instead of running around trying to coordinate schedules, ELL teachers had their schedules ready on day one um, and were therefore able to begin instruction on day one. Um, and there have been uh, noticeable gains so far, even just halfway through the year, um, in mathematics um, for some of the younger grades. Um, so you can see that there was a 5% and a 13% increase on the mid-year interim scores um, in, the <clears throat> in K and first grade, um, as well as 4% uh, overall growth in grade one on the first interim. So small gains, but over the course of three years, if we can continue to build upon those, we're, we're really excited. Um, and the teachers are optimistic about it. Um, uh, two thirds or so of respondents said that they feel like the Newcomer Academy is going to be the best way we can help these almost 300 students in our school. Um, so obviously along with the survey came some constructive criticism from our colleagues. Um, so these were kind of the four main categories that we felt like teachers wanted us to maybe as a RELB focus in on and try and improve over the course of the next five months and going into our second year of the pilot program. So the first was instructional time. Um, so two out of the seven ESL teachers who responded to the survey um, just felt that there could be some adaptation, especially at the younger grade levels, um, while meeting the goals of the 90-minute recommended time of instruction is sounds great on paper for a kindergartner to sit in a small group for 90 minutes and sustain attention and things like that in reality has been difficult. So just figuring out how we can maximize productivity and effectiveness of instruction at those given times was one thing we're going to look into going forward. Um, instructional time in the classroom was another issue that was brought up. Um, this was by the general education teachers. Um, and just making sure that as students get the services they need, whether it's Title I, ESL, special education, that they're not being um, outside of the classroom for too much time, that there's a, there's a healthy balance and good communication. So we want to see how we can facilitate communication between all involved parties. 
Um, the ESL group size um, is something that's also um, was brought up. Um, we'll talk in a later slide just a little bit about how, as Lisa mentioned earlier, transitioning students in and out of the program is going to be a major focus of our REL moving forward so we can help address and maintain um, reasonable group sizes. And defining newcomers. Um, we just, uh, this is something that we need to offer more clarity about in terms of what a newcomer is, um, both for entering the program and exiting the program. Um, so we already at our last uh, REL meeting for the Organizational Structure Council um, broke up into two teams. One of the groups cre created the survey that was sent out to teachers, while the other team was looking ahead at this transitioning. Um, so they are examining and studying um, different assessment possibilities and trying to figure out how we can build a language assessment team. Um, so one more acronym for us all to learn, but um, LAT right now is what we're going with. Um, and having that team be composed of teachers and staff who are, who are directly involved with these students and, and have some sort of criteria that we can measure and mark the progress of um, students who are in the newcomer academy and when it's ready, when they're ready to transition um, out of the program. And we want to make sure that it's broader than just access scores, just because the timeline of when we get those results um, is something that can often be challenging to make really important decisions or timely decisions about. Um, and last but not least, um, Ms. Consolo uh, arranged two video clips that we have here. Um, so this is a third grader at Garfield, Osama, and he came from Sudan and falls within kind of our traditional definition of a newcomer. And he just talks for a little bit about his experience at Garfield. <clears throat> And who are those teachers that are helping you? Miss um, Haggerty, second grade teacher, and Miss Kate, third grade teacher. Is there any other teachers that help you with English during okay. the day? I mean, Miss Donovan and Miss FC. Miss Donovan yeah. and Miss FC have yeah. helped you? Miss FC in second grade. And Miss Donovan, and what does Miss Donovan teach you in her classes? She teaches me English, language. And can you tell me a little bit about what that group is like for you in Miss Donovan's class? That this is last group and 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 some of them speak English a little bit and 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 they speak Spanish so 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 I speak to Miss Donovan so so I got so I learned the English from her so to to uh, she gave me uh, some more sheets to to do it so I got it all of it. Um, correct. So, so, so I moved to the higher group. So you moved to a different group throughout the end. How's that been the move? Do you feel like it's been good? Yeah. Good. Um, so what is your day like at Garfield? Good. It's good? And what is it, what, what is your schedule like? How does your day start? Um, start like, what, what, when, like the morning work lesson and the math lesson and the special lesson. Um, and I like recess, and I like social studies. Mm -hmm. And do you, when do you go to see Miss Donovan during the day? Um, in, in small groups, and it, it, which is, the clock is going to be 12 10. And then do you see your teacher also in your yeah. classroom? Yep. Yeah. So what are some things that we can help you with, um, help you learn more at Garfield? What are some things we can do for you? Um, English. You want to learn more English? Yeah. Okay, we'd love to help you with that. Thank you so much, Osama. Is the other one here? Mm -hmm. um, and this second video that we're queuing up is uh, student Fabiola, who's a fifth grade student. Um, I'm a little biased. She's currently in my class, so um, I think she's <laughs> absolutely fantastic but um, she speaks not specifically from the perspective of a newcomer um, but from someone who's been in the ESL program at Garfield over a series of years with different support services and really exemplifies um, some of the successes that we've seen just with the the instruction that our teachers have provided what grade did you arrive at Garfield what country did you come from? Um, 
or go to school in before coming to Garfield? El Salvador. And what was school like at El Salvador? It was really hard for me, but now in this school I feel like it's much easier for me because I get a lot of help. In my country I didn't get like a lot of support like in this in this school, so I'm really happy that I'm in this school. So at Garfield, what has been so helpful to you as you've gotten used to life in the new country and learning a new language? Um, there, like, they, there's a lot of English teachers that they come pick me up. And like, we read, we write, we talk. And it's like really helpful for me because if like, if, if there were not them, I would, I would not know any English. Okay, so who has been really helpful for you? Well, have you, as you've adjusted to the country and learned the new language? The, the two teachers that are there really helpful for me are Miss Emcee, that she's not with me anymore because she, she's teaching my class, and um, Mr. Gappa, that now I work with him, and like he's really helpful for me. And what is your day like at Garfield? Um, it's like I mostly. I'm in my like regular class, and but that sometimes they like every single day mostly they come pick me up to the English class and I get like a lot of help from there. So yeah. And how else can we help you learn more at Garfield? I don't know, but I really want to try reading. That's all that I want reading, and, and that's my dream reading. Awesome. Thank you, Fabiola. Okay, bye. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so those are just two of many, many students that we have, but um, we thought it was kind of a good example of just kind of some of the great things going on at Garfield and what we're hoping to even continue and make better through um, the next two and a half years or so of the, the newcomer pilot. So thank you for giving us the time to share this with you today. <clears throat> any members have any questions? Ms. Tai. Um. What is the most difficult thing you can define about uh, making this program work successfully? I mean, I was thinking about, you know, the devil is always in the details. For example, how do you create that classroom with enough of a balance so that you have enough role models and make sure that everything gels all the way through? I don't know if that's your greatest problem or if that's even a problem, but what is the most difficult part about making it work? So really, this, creating the schedule, I think, was the most difficult part of it because there's so many moving parts in our school. It's not just the ESL services, but there's lots of services that are provided for students throughout the day. So it's really taking a look at you know, Title I reading services, ESL services, but really framing it with ESL services first in mind because we have so many students that receive that support. The classroom formation procedures, um, the Garfield Elementary School a few years ago, um, we came up with a system of really checking and balancing classrooms. Um, and so this didn't really throw anything new to us. We really have um, kind of produced a system where we try our best to make them as balanced as possible and make it as you know evenly spread as possible. Um, so it really didn't affect it much. We already had a system in place. Um, there are other challenges too, like you know some of the, the concerns for the Newcomer Academy, um, they, they're not really newcomer academy concerns. They're things that always existed. Um, for example, the kids are out of the room too much receiving services. That was in the past too. You know, they were receiving ESL services and Title I services, but now within this pilot, we're really able to take a look at it more and really try to provide some answers and solutions to some of these issues that we might have had in the past that we might not have been able to look at um, in such detail. So it's been, it's been good. Been the, what's been the easiest thing? <laughs> the kids. The kids. <laughs> the cooperation of the teachers has been great, really. It's we're construct one of the toughest things is we're building this as we go, right? We had a format and we were really thoughtful and, and and really try to think as much as possible, what are the potential pitfalls of it, and try to solve those problems as we go. But in reality, we had to dive in, and thank goodness we have such a great staff and understanding staff that you know, they were willing to take this leap with us, and they're willing to be innovative, and 
you know, we're constructing as we go. So there are hiccups. It doesn't come without failures. And, you know, they're being very patient, but, you know, very vocal as our Garfield teachers are. We love them. And, you know, they let us know what works, what doesn't, and we try to find the solution for it. But they're being very patient as far as, you know, we're learning as we go. And we're going to make adjustments by the end of the year to see if it get better, better for year two and then even better for year three. Yes, Ms. Chai. And, and how do you decide who will go into the after-school program part of it? Um, at this stage, the after-school component has not been implemented. That's something that realistically we'll be looking at implementing probably, hopefully, in year two. Um, so it was kind of part of our very ambitious goals as we set forth on this. But like Lisa said, um, just encountering you know the reality of the situation, um, that's something that we're hoping to roll out in the future. It's wonderful. Any other members? Thank you for your incredible work. Thank you. Uh, so we much. really appreciate it. Thank and what, one one question I do have is, um, and you may have touched on it already, but what would success look like for 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 the program? You know, like if you were to look back and say, this is successful. Aside from just continuing on, like what what does it look like? I know you mentioned uh, uh, increases in scores that you've seen, but aside from that, what you know. How would you measure success? Yeah, um, I'd say I think the the main success that I'd like to see come from it is that as a whole school community that everyone understands kind of the importance of the newcomer academy and can kind of speak to that. So whether you have newcomers in your classroom, whether you're an ESL teacher, um, or no matter what your role is in the building, that you recognize um, some progress or growth in the students. Um, so I, I think that's our real, um, real goal with this, that we can walk away and have people say, you know, I remember when Fabiola came here and look at how, where look she, at is, where now. she is now. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, and I also think too, it's not just about the access scores. Like, right. it's not right. about that. It, sometimes it's just about the assimilation and how they've assimilated and how comfortable they feel within the school and thinking about those SEL components and providing families support too and getting families to feel comfortable and providing them a familiar face and a, a place to reach out. So we're thinking about all these things and I think that would be success for us. It's not just about the data. We have, we've had a successful ESL program. We're doing great. We're just looking to to better it and, and really make the ESL students our first thought every day because they really are the majority of our school and we have a lot of passionate teachers that are excited to teach them. Great. Thank you so much for your for your hard work and dedication and passion for, for the students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Great job. Um, Uh, it, I, I will share with the committee that as all the work that the RELB does, uh, we look to pilot in one school and when we find success, we try to um, scale that model into other schools. So we will be watching carefully the progress of the students, both ac academic and their social emotional progress as they transition uh, into the school community and use those different kinds of measures to determine over the course of the pilot, and particularly at the end of the pilot, if um, this is a program that we could uh, adopt or at least adapt in our other elementary schools as well, and then what would it look like at the secondary level. So thank you both. Fantastic job as always. Great job. Uh, the next item, actually the next two items on the superintendent's report are going to be reported out by uh, Dr. Mokaba Bernardo. She has uh, uh, some initial information about not the middle school lottery itself, but about the tours that students and parents will be invited to participate in um, in preparation for our uh, solicitation of which schools each student wants to list as their preference prior to the lottery process. Uh, the lottery itself won't happen until uh, later in April, but we'll begin our work and uh, begin the work of helping families understand our three middle schools so that they can make an informed decision uh, much sooner than that. And after that report, Dr. Mokaba Bernardo is going to give us just a quick update on the district review we engaged in last week, which all of the committee members uh, and the mayor and others were a part of. So. Dr. Mokaba Bernardo. 
Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Um, we have worked with the middle school and the uh, elementary school principals to come up with our uh, dates for the um, tours of each of our middle schools. They are gonna happen at the beginning of March. So on Thursday, March 1st, the Hill um, fifth graders and the Lincoln um, fifth graders will head to our three uh, middle schools. Um, on Monday, March 5th, uh, Beachmont and Whalen will head to um, the three middle schools. And on Tuesday, March 6th, Paul Revere and Garfield Elementary will have the opportunity um, to tour each of the three middle schools. Um, one thing that we are doing this year, uh, which is a little bit of a different piece to the process, is we're going to have all of our students complete the tour, and then they will receive the selection form, um, and we'll have a few days uh, after their tours to make their uh, selection for their uh, preferences for the middle school lottery, and then those will be turned in um, mid-March prior to the lottery. The second thing on the agenda is the uh, Comprehensive District Review. Uh, two weeks ago, January 8th through the 11th, we hosted a four-day site visit by a team from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education as part of our uh, Comprehensive District Review. The goal of this review is to provide us um, with comprehensive expert perspective to uh, inform our work and our district improvement plans uh, moving forward. So during this four-day visit, their team conducted classroom observations uh, in each of our uh, schools. They conducted interviews um, and focus groups with various stakeholders at all levels, um, and they also conducted an extensive document and data review um, process. Now, uh, the next steps for us, we await the draft findings and recommendations which we anticipate uh, will arrive later this spring. Um, we will have the opportunity to fact check um, this draft report um, and submit any of our um, any issues that we may have seen in their draft report. Um, and we expect a final report probably late in the school year, I would say maybe June. Um, when this final report arrives, um, we will certainly share information and it will also be public um, and uh, listed on the department's website. We look forward to receiving this feedback to inform our uh, future work. Thank you, Dr. Mokaba Bernardo. Um, the last three items on the superintendent's report are really just quick updates or leading information um, that I wanted to share with the committee and with the community at large. Uh, item D is the Leading the Nation initiative, and this is a new initiative put out in partnership between the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Executive Office of Education. Um, and what they're trying to do is lead a new initiative um, where they are highlighting great practices in our public schools. And they've invited a number of districts, Revere proudly one of them, um, to be showcase districts as part of the Leading the Nation initiative. And so um, we're working with folks at DESE to identify a date on which we're going to have a showcase of student work. Our particular focus will be the work that our six, school, six of our schools are doing with the Mass Consortium for Innovative Educational Assessment around performance assessments. And we envision kind of a um, carousel where people can go around to different stations and see examples of the work that our students have, have been doing. And that's something that we anticipate inviting our legislative leaders to and the whole Revere community parents of the kids who are participating, but also members of the um, Chamber of Commerce, our city councilors, um, and all others who are invested in the, in the school department. So I'll have uh, more specific details on that um, probably at our February or our March meeting to get that date out for everybody. Um, item E is updates on school construction projects. We have um, four items in this area on the table right now. I'll start with the Hill School uh, and just share with folks that we are at the stage that we're getting ready to close out that project and we're working with our owner's project manager to f finalize the paperwork with um, 
the MSBA in order to move into full ownership of that building. Um, it's been a long time coming, so that's a bit of a relief. Uh, we have two projects at the Garfield complex. One is the new roof that is just about at completion. We have what I'm hoping will be a final construction meeting tomorrow, which will include a walkthrough of the roof to ensure that all punchless items were completed. Um, so that project, uh, which was about $8 million, um, largely paid for by the MSBA, uh, is finding its, its end point as well. Um, and just starting will be the Garfield boiler project, which once we get through uh, the cold season, uh, which hopefully will be very, very soon, uh, we'll probably wait until uh, mid-March or early April to be assured of, of good weather. Um, they'll begin the process of removing the existing boilers at the Garfield School, which is somewhat complicated because their boilers are in the top level of the building as opposed to in the basement where most people have their boilers. Um, so there's a little bit of a complication uh, with that, but uh, nonetheless, they, they expect that job to be relatively unintrusive to the school once we turn off our he heating systems, and um, it should put the building in sound condition um, once the second project is completed. Um, and then the fourth project I wanted to mention, uh, which we've mentioned before, is the Rivia High School uh, new building project. Um, the mayor and I did have a meeting earlier today where we talked about what our next steps might be so that we as a community can continue to work toward that goal even though the MSBA has not yet invited us, invited us into their core program to actually be con begin construction on a new building. Um, so we're still strategizing around that and, and definitely the, uh, I'm so pleased as a superintendent to know that the support of, so, of the school committee, the mayor, and even so many of our city councilors has been to push forward and try to figure out what we can do in order to not um, be stagnant in our progress toward a new high school. So we'll continue to work on that. I just wanted to assure the parents at home that that's not something that's fallen off the radar here. Um, and then the last item is winter weather. Um, we did have some issues with uh, broken water pipes at the Garfield School, but also here at Revere High School. Um, we attribute that to the long period of extreme cold that we had uh, in late December and early January. Uh, but I did want to take a moment to thank the community, in particular our DPW and our fire department, who responded to all of those issues and really were unbelievable partners to the school department and, inclu and include our own school department maintenance team uh, and custodians who were showing up at buildings at 2 o'clock in the morning and making sure those buildings were ready for students and teachers to enter the next day. It, th these were the kinds of issues that other districts were forced to close, uh, close school, putting parents in a little bit of a jam for daycare sometimes and meaning that students were actually missing classes. Um, but our team, the, the Revere Public Schools Maintenance and Facilities team, as well as the Revere Fire Department and the Revere DPW, really stepped up and did everything that they needed to do. Uh, it really just is demonstrative of how this community comes together for these kids. And so I wanted to take a minute to highlight that. It really is a proud moment for, for all of us and, and to see that partnership. Um, and along these same lines, we're not through the end of the winter yet. We still have a few more weeks that we need to worry about these issues. Um, but one of the biggest ones that I'd ask the community con to consider is the shoveling of their own personal sidewalks to make sure that our kids are safe walking to school. We have had a number of complaints from parents saying, it's tough for my child to get there because somebody didn't um, shovel their sidewalk, or in some cases, three and four houses in a row didn't shovel their sidewalk. So uh, as we ask the community to partner with us, I would just ask that residents really take the time um, to clear their sidewalks so that the, streets are, the sidewalks are passable and our <laughs> students are not forced into the street. Um, and that really concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Any uh, commentary from the members? Uh, Ms. Franti. Uh, Dr. Kelly, you said they're going to start the boilers in either April, uh, I mean, either March or April. Will they be ready for school next year? 
They will be. It's anticipated that it will be a short-term project with less than a month's duration between removing the existing tanks and then installing the new ones. Um, the new ones are much smaller than the existing ones, so one of the biggest challenges will be actually removing the current tanks that they think they're going to have to cut into pieces in order to remove. So that's the greatest and, challenge. And my last question is, I know we had the broken pipes because of the weather. Is there anything that we can do to try to prevent this not happening going forward? We, we've done what we, what we can do. We, there were some areas, especially in the overhang of the Garfield School, that was designed without insulation. And that created um, two of the main problems that we had water leaks resulting from. Our maintenance department kept those areas open after they cleaned up the damage and has gone, have gone back and insulated those areas so it should, they shouldn't repeat themselves. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Tai. No, I just want to compliment um, the junior ROTC for going out as part of the Snow Angels because um, I look after a couple of people and they would never have been able to shovel their sidewalk and it would have been and and they showed up and they shoveled it all and it's really nice that they're out there I'm very proud of them and of course proud of everybody who has done what they have done for us so and we thank you for your leadership thank you miss Ty. any other members uh, the next item on our agenda is the student representative report Take it away. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I just wanted to start off by congratulating senior Hannah Fitzpatrick on breaking the school's indoor track record of the 1,000-meter race with a time of 3 minutes and 14 seconds last week. I would also like to congratulate another senior, Valentina Pepic, for reaching 1,000 points in her basketball career here at Revere High two weeks ago. Valentina will continue her uh, basketball career at Niagara University, a D1 school. Uh, for basketball this week, yeah, Niagara. For basketball this week, the girls play away uh, currently right now at Winthrop tonight while the boys play at home starting at 7. Friday night, the girls uh, play Swamp Scott at home while the boys go away with our city game starting at 7. For high school fundraisers, Miss um, Hamilton's and Miss Coors Advisories will be hosting a fundraiser at Kelly's in Saugus. This Thursday, January 25th from 5 to 8 to fund for their capstone trip to Texas in February. Class of 2021 and 2019 are having a fundraiser Thursday, February 8th at um, 7 p.m. at the Mix 360, also known as the Town Line in Malden, as they'll be hosting an RHS paint night. To participate, a $30 donation is required with free appetizers and a canvas and supplies given out. Um, and then the first semester just ended uh, last Friday, meaning that report cards will be given out this Friday, January 26th, before the end of the day. Uh, School Improvement Committee will meet Wednesday, February 14th at 3 o'clock at the Eastern Conference Room to discuss very to various topics. One topic will be the feedback from what the students asked to be improved in the bathrooms. Um, and that will be discussed, and I'll bring back the information for the next meeting. That concludes the report. Can I add Thank one you thing? so much. Henry, I, did, I would just to add one thing for parents. The report cards will be given out, as you mentioned. There'll also be a copy mailed home, so parents can expect a copy of the semester report card in the mail as well uh, as asking their children to produce the copy they received at school. Ms. Rizzo? Henry, I just want, was last week's school improvement um, meeting canceled? Um, no, last week's was not canceled that I know of. They just didn't bring it up, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm not sure I wasn't able to attend last uh, okay. week's meeting. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the uh, public participation portion. Three minutes, Three minutes Ralph. All right, I got to explain something, though, first. <laughs> I'm here in two capacities. Hopefully I can have more than three minutes. Yeah. I'm here at Ralph DeChico, 49 Washington Street. First thing, I'm here as a member of the governing board for the Paul Revere School. Uh, I just wanted to thank the school committee for working alongside of us for our search for the principal of the new Paul Revere, of the Paul Revere School. Um, just as an update, the um, job posting did go up on uh, school spring today. 
Um, and thank you for the assistance with that. Uh, without your help uh, and guidance, it, 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 it helped us a great deal. Um, so we are moving forward, and we wasn't sure if anybody had any questions or, or anything on that, but it, the process is, is moving forward. So we do have some time. Mm -hmm. So can I add, um, I'll just mention one thing, Ralph, that we talked about at the last governing board meeting, um, which I think was a, a recommendation that some committee members had made, so I just want to share it. Yeah. The, the governing board did talk about um, perhaps um, having some funds to engage um, Barbara Kelly to come back after uh, we have somebody named, if they were to start in July 1st, having um, finding some time for her to come in and, and overlap with that person. I know that had come up in previous school committee uh, discussions, so I just wanted to mention that the governing board did agree that that would be a great idea if that were to happen. Thank you. So that's I just that's that was my first capacity of coming up here, so I just wasn't sure if anybody had any questions or, or anything on that. So, um, so that was fast, so I didn't need three minutes for that. My, my second thing is I have uh, some things that I'd like to pass out to, to all the members. And then my three minutes can start. <laughs> all right, all right. If you give me a lot of leeway. He makes a lot of leeway. Who's the chairman here? <laughs> <laughs> I made individual packets for everyone here. Um, so that basically, I'm just gonna give an overview of it and then everybody can look at it because I know I'm gonna be held to my three minutes. Um, yeah, but on the, it's, it's small because I took eclipses, but on the bottom of it is the website where you can go from it. Everything is from the Department of Ed. Um, I, it, it's funny how I came about all of this. Um, and then uh, on January 5th, I got uh, an email from the Department of Education about the, the new implementation of the redesign for the, the new time learning um, implementation for weather-related uh, issues. Um, that uh, a waiver, a new app waiver application was being implemented uh, last year that school districts could apply for, for inclement weather. Um, so I wasn't sure if Revere had applied for this application, um, but my my goal three over three years ago when I instituted the the blizzard bag in the Paul Revere school was my fruition was to eventually go to online with paper as a backup for students that did not have internet access and whatnot with the fruition of also uh, extending this to summer programs because of the summer slide. Um, so it was twofold. It was not only, our goal wasn't for snow days because we knew at that time that's not what it was for to make up for snow days, but it was to keep the learning and education going for the students. Now the state has taken a look at that and has, I guess, adopted this policy that with the, with the waiver application and the right implementation of it, uh, you can use these new, this new policy of the new re redesign and possibly use it as uh, learning time for our snow days if it's adopted and your waiver goes through and it's for a three-year process. You're, you're allowed to have it for three years uh, once, you're, once you're accepted into it. Uh, the, first, the first part of the, pam the pamphlet that I gave you is the exact letter that was posted on January 5th from the ESE email that they sent out. The second uh, document is the school redesign um, uh, student learning time waiver process. I know it's small print, so I just did a caption of it, but on the bottom it has the exact HTML, HTML link where you can see the full aspect of it. And then the third one is the evaluation plan guidance, which shows you how you can implement it. And then the third section is the 2017-18 student learning time waiver application itself. So you can basically see what they're, they're asking for in the application process. And then what I also did is 
I found one, there's a, there's a couple of communities that are doing it. One is Wakefield, which I'm sure some people know about it. It's, they, they have, it's called Learning Anywhere. Uh, and it has all different things and they're also implementing it as a summer learning program. So it will help with the summer slide, which is, was my goal years ago when I wanted to introduce the, the blizzard bag. So this will help on the summer slide. My, 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 my goal is, uh, is to keep the education moving. And my, my second goal is now that the state, it looks like the state has seen that we are in New England and we do lose a lot of days because of the inclement weather, that there should be a way that these kids are still learning, whether it is online through uh, a lot of these programs that they're using, that they're using now, that are instituted through um, ABC Kids, Lexia or whatnot, and they have paper forms but the school districts are also allowing students to do the assignments they're not do when they go back to school, they do after. So all the information is there, but I'd like to see that the district look into doing something like this and it will benefit because we know what happens at the end of the year if we have to add snow days. We're not having the kids are not staying in school. They're still going back to their home countries. They're not getting educated. This way they'll be learning through the whole year at the same time still getting educated and we're meeting the requirements through the state. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, thank you, Ralph, uh, for putting this packet together. It is um, something that we've been looking into as a district. It's not something that's as simple and straightforward to say, let's have blizzard bags, and we're going to have blizzard bags. There's a lot involved with um, how we work with families, especially kids who don't have supports at home, who don't have necessarily uh, actively engaged parents, or kids who do have actively engaged parents that are still required to go to work on uh, days that is snowing. The experience of how that child's gonna complete a blizzard bag, so to speak, might be very different than in a household where there is a parent home helping the child do the work. Um, there are implications that we've been talking to the teachers union about uh, because there are requirements for teachers in terms of how they participate on these days and in applying for the waiver, all of that needs to be evident to the Department of Education before they'll grant a waiver. So we're not in a place right now where we're looking to implement this for the current school year or even for next school year. But we are doing our research. We do have the documents from Wakefield. I've spoken to the superintendent there personally. Dr. Mokaba has as well. Um, we're also working with the five district partnership to see if there's something that we can do as a consortium to develop a blizzard bag idea. So we are working on it and we are staying very much abreast of what's happening at the state level and the different requirements that the state uh, has put in place in order for proposals to be approved. Um, but I, I do want to be clear that it's not something that we would think, we think that we would be implementing um, even for next school year because there's so much work that needs to pre-stage the implementation of a program like this. Just one comment that I want to make on that for the thing that uh, some students don't have families at home to work on it as done in some states, the, the time requirement is that these, these, uh, these work assignments are not due the day they come back. There is right. usually a week to 10 days time frame that they are completed. Right. So it's not that if, if they don't have the, the people at home to do it, that, that should not be one of the reasons to not move forward, that you should look at all avenues. And um, just my, my, my goal is that this, when this was, brought about last year, that's when hopefully the talks were starting. Mm -hmm. And like everything else, we don't, you, you wanna be in the forefront. You don't wanna have to go back backwards and, and, and wait for other people to do it. Like the Paul Revere, you wanna be innovative. You wanna be on the forefront of everything. You don't, you don't want other people to be ahead of you on everything. Ralph, we understand that as a district that we wanna be on the for, forefront and the cutting edge of everything. But we also need to be realistic about what things we can implement when and how many challenges we can take on at once. But we're, we do doing, the, we're doing the SEL, the EEL. This is another program that so, we could try and pilot. Excuse me, yep. So we do have a district improvement plan. We do have a set of goals. And in those goals, we have identified what our focus areas are gonna be for the next couple of years. This is important work. I'm not yeah. saying that it's not. Um, it's, it's something that we're definitely staying abreast of and will yeah. continue to stay abreast of as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Rizzo. 
you know, I, I realize we do tease you as far as public participation, but I do want to commend you as a community member, as a parent, for the work you do put in, um, how you do go above what most people will find time to do. Um, I am familiar with the Learn Anywhere program. I think it's a great program. Um, it's a very well thought out um, program with a lot of work to um, get to that point. Um, but I also say I find it compelling um, that it avoids the lack of productivity like come the summer months when we're getting to the end. So I, I mean, I think it's great. Um, and hopefully we can get there at some point um, and come up. I, what I do like too, and when she mentioned the five district partnership, right. it would be great to also have that online blended um, Learning. core selectives. Right. So, the main thing, too, is the summer slide. I like the, the and summer that's learning. that's always important. Right. But I think it would be great. Five district partnership, us working together and collaborating together, I think that's the first place to start. Um, but thank you. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Rizzo. Anyone else? Thank you, Ralph. We all value and appreciate your input. And uh, not only does he do this for the school department and the school district, but uh, he also wears many hats in the city and, and uh, does a great job on the Commission of Disabilities also. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate all that you do. Next item on our agenda is the consent calendar. Is there, uh, are there items that we'd like to take off the consent agenda? Mrs. Gravely, see your uh, mic. About the other one, that one. There you go. I would like to pull the encumbrance and invoices. So the encumbrances and invoices will be uh, taken off the consent agenda, and I believe um, item one I, the uh, school field trips, will also be taken off, uh, subject to uh, information being provided to. Uh, the superintendent and to the school committee uh, regarding some documentation on the school field trips. Um, okay, so minus those two items, uh, is there a motion to uh, uh, to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, roll call. Mr. Ferranti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Mr. Sinella? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Mr. Visconti? Yes. Mayor Arrigo? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the report of subcommittees. Do you not need to go over those two items? Oh. Uh, are we the incumbents? Oh. Okay. So we are going, oh, the two items that are, um, that were taken off the consent calendar, we will uh, take up those items, uh, which are um, item 1F, which includes encumbrances and invoices. Mr. Franti? Yeah, Dr. Kelly, do you want to speak about it first before I read them, or do you want to speak afterwards? Um, it doesn't matter. Okay. So the, the encumbrances and invoices that we're looking at this evening uh, are related to the closeout of the Hill School project. These are all items that have been in the works, um, and we would wish we would have had completed in, in a possession much earlier than the state. Uh, nonetheless, um, with the recommendation of the building subcommittee, uh, they require the school committee approval. Okay, the, the first encumbrance is from Lumbar uh, Company LLC. Booster control unit for gas boost is $1,685. So move. Second. All in favor, all opposed? So moved. Uh, second is pump seals and gaskets for two pumps. $3,789. All in favor, all opposed? Wait, wait, we need a, you need a uh, all right, second. I, I need a second you on need that. need a second. Okay, second. Okay. All, right. all in favor, all opposed? There you go. So moved. Okay, replace lock fair water heater provided under warranty, $3,525. So moved. Second. All in favor, all opposed? So moved. 
Uh, next one is Concept Art Services, LLC, design printing and supply of five alternative collage art panels for lobby, lobby $5,250. So move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Ferranti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Mr. Sanella? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Mr. Visconti? Yes. Mayor Arrigo? Yes. Now the invoices. Lombard Company, LLC, booster control unit for gas boosters, $1,685. So moved. Second. All in favor, all opposed? So moved. Next, Limbaugh Company, LLC, pump sales and gaskets for two pumps, $3,789. So moved. Second. All in favor, all opposed? Aye. So moved. Third, Limbaugh Company, LLC, replace lock via water heater, $3,425. So moved. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Aye. So moved. Uh, concept Art Supply, company supply of collage art panels for lobby, $5,250. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Ferranti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Mr. Sanella? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Mr. Visconti? Yes. Mayor Arrigo? Yes. The second item that's been taken off the consent calendar is uh, related to school field trips. Uh, Dr. Kelly. Sure. Uh, so the committee has before them um, two actually day trips for the robotics club. Uh, both of them are out of state, so they require the approval of the committee in order to attend. Um, one piece of information that I will reach out to Josh Miranda, who is the supervisor of that club tomorrow, uh, is to ensure that all of the chaperones who will be driving have appropriate quarry checks and that no underage drivers will be used to transport um, peers at school. And I would just ask the committee that uh, with the assumption that, the, that those two provisions be put in place, that they approve these two field trips. Ms. Tai? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we give uh, permission uh, to uh, Josh Miranda to, and to the Robotics Club to go on this field trip, provided the superintendent is satisfied that all appropriate measures have been taken for the safety of the kids. Second. Uh, roll call. Mr. Ferranti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Ms. Rizzo? Yes. Mr. Sinella? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Mr. Visconti? Yes. Mayor Rigo? Yes. The next item on our agenda is the report of subcommittees. Uh, Ms. Tai. Uh, Mr. Mayor, with um, input from members of the committee, um, we have decided to set up our subcommittees as follows. The personnel committee will be chaired by Carol Tai with members Michael Ferranti and Stacy Rizzo. The plant and maintenance will be chaired by Jerry Visconti with Michael Ferranti and Fred Sanella. The Ways and Means will be chaired by Michael Ferranti with Carol Tai and Jerry Visconti. The Policies and Procedures will be chaired by Stacy Rizzo with Susan Gravelisi and Fred Sanella. The Health and Special Ed will be chaired by Susan Gravelisi with Stacy Rizzo and Carol Tai, and the Safety and Security will be chaired by Fred Sinella with Susan Gravelisi and Jerry Visconti. And I, so I, I move that, Mr. Mayor, and that we accept this document for the Revere School Committee standing subcommittees for 2018. Second. Um, I, I'd just like to add that um, it's really great to talk to a group of people, all of whom are so cooperative, and particularly Mr. Sinella, Ms. Gravelisi, and everyone who understood and one of the best, and it's been a pleasure to work with that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tsai. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So moved. Was that all for uh, committees, for committee report? Ms. Tsai? Yep. Uh, old business? None. 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 New business? None. None. School committee interests? Mrs. Rizzo. Just as a reminder, um, tomorrow night's a CPAC meeting for um, anyone to attend. It's an open forum. Um, it's held at 200 Winthrop Ave, and it starts at 6 p.m. It's a good opportunity for parents to go out and um, 
just throw out any questions or information they might want to other parents because we all share some of the same um, questions and desires and it's a good place to um, see it from other parents. So hopefully there'll be some um, more people in attendance. Um, also, um, I have the opportunity of attending the National School Board Advocacy Conference um, in DC on February 1st. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, after four days of workshops and learning some talking points, which I can always learn, um, and advocacy tips, we will head up to the um, Hill and we get to speak to our congressmen on things that are near and dear to all of our hearts and also discuss the um, implementation of the ESSA, ESSA program. So I'm really looking forward to that and bringing back some information for this committee. Um, anyone want to come, you just pay for your airfare and I have um, two extra rooms. I don't share. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Rizzo. Mm -hmm. Any other members? Uh, motions? No. No motions. Uh, with that, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And uh, this body will be adjourned until February 27th. Thank you.